Hello my soccer universe, in order to have Tuesday content a little bit earlier on I decided let's talk about what happened in Austria and in Germany it also will uh, do quite nicely because now we have two home games for LASK where I will for one for sure not talk about Germany and quite some stuff happened in Germany but um, first off in Austria the league is getting really exciting for the simple reason that Salzburg again could not win at home. This time my team, Lusk, uh, got a credible nil-nil draw there. Sturm winning. And the excitement is back. It's only two points that the two teams are meeting in the next round. And in addition, we had probably one of the most entertaining games of the season with the Vienna teams playing a 3-3, which also means that Rapid Vienna, since, uh, since they moved, I think in 2017, into their new stadium, they have not won a derby there. That, I think, is a very interesting statistic. But yeah, it's really, really interesting in Austria. However, in Germany, the big talk is about missed opportunities. Um, what Salzburg is doing in Austria, Bayern is doing in Germany. Bayern has really, is really on the verge of imploding, uh, having thrown away the cup title. Having thrown away the Champions League already, they're doing their best to not win the league. And Dortmund have been in decent form, especially at the beginning of the year, they were outstanding stand, stand, standing form. But what Dortmund cannot manage is to take advantage when Bayern are in a bad shape. And that's such a shame because uh, you throw away basically every chance that they have. And this might be, we have now... Um, just a couple of rounds left to play. I think it's around six rounds left to play. And if you would have been level right now, you had the chance. You had a, a good lead, a two-goal lead with a man up. And you play only 3-3 three, three in a relegation threat at a relegation threat in Stuttgart. That's not gonna cut it, and Bayern Munich is gonna win that friggin' title again. Uh, speaking of Stuttgart, also the relegation battle got a little bit, you know, the edge is on because uh, Schalke got a big win over Hertha. Hertha now look really in danger having coach, uh, fired the coach already. But uh, Schalke, Stuttgart picking up points. Bochum kind of not picking up enough points. Augsburg also kind of meandering. It could get in interesting. I think at Hoffenheim, who were really in a relegation fight, they are in decent enough form. I mean, 1-1 one, one at, uh, at Bayern after three wins uh, does that. So I think they are through. And even though Werder Bremen are not looking old, all the great current not all looking that convincing, I think th that fight is done. There's also, of course, very interesting fights for the um, uh, European spots. The top four spot uh, fight is still wide open. Uh, between Union, Leipzig and Freiburg and then for the last Europa spot, you know, there's also we have Frankfurt also not going anywhere, have, have, have not won in I think six games or something like that and that for a squad of the quality of Frankfurt is really really bad. But I want to start with the uh, crazy uh, weekend that we had in Austria. I mean, even in the relegation battle or the lower, lower group, uh, it got quite in, in interesting with Reed playing 1-1 one, one at home against Tirol, which is desperately needed need points, although they need, need a win. Uh, in a top duel, Wolfsburg actually stopped Austria Lustenau for a change. And then Alltag had a two-goal lead, which more or less would have meant safety for them. However, Hartberg came back with another draw. And so, you know, the bottom three, Reed, Altach and Hartberg, are still very, very close together with Reed having the steepest hill to climb there. However, it's on top where uh, Sturm Graz, it was only a matter of time until the score against Klangford. Klangford had a few uh, uh, chances, but ever since they lost their goal scorer Pink to China just a couple of weeks ago, uh, they are just there to make up the numbers. I mean, they have achieved their season goal. They will not get relegated again, although everyone says they, are, they should be there. So they are a decent team. Uh, however, I don't think they, they will threaten uh, to, not, uh, to make anything higher than sixth place, which does not qualify for anything uh, going into Europe. Having said, said that, it took a while. I mean, there was first a goal disallowed for Sturm. Uh, then they had a penalty. The Kittes really very badly shot. It was an easy save. Uh, but a few minutes later, Horvath, uh, who had scored his winning goal against Lask, 
uh, gets the wall wall in and lay it on Gazebego, which makes it 2-0. And at that point, uh, as soon as they made it 1-0, they actually put a lot of pressure on Salzburg. Salzburg played at home to Lask and I thought this will go like it always goes. Lask goes to Salzburg, will play well, will probably even give us the idea that they may win and then late on Salzburg will kill us. Except that this time, I mean, the movie was kind of there, but it didn't happen as, as much. It was a very credible first half where Salzburg did not let, uh, where Lask did not let Salzburg get into their usual pressing game very nicely, even having some extended um, possession phases. Uh, by letting the Sal by inviting the Salzburg uh, frontline to attack them, but then played out, uh, which, which was really really pressed, uh, to see, and with a little bit more luck and a little bit more oversight, you could have created uh, some better chances. Especially Moses Uso twice did it on by himself, and especially on the first one, the eighth minute, he probably should have passed. Then Talavierev scores, and it's given offside because Astia was just before. He was standing off offside. He goes into the duel for 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 the ball. He doesn't get get, get the ball, but since he's an active participant, it was an offside. It would have been a great goal by Talavierov, who is on loan from Sparta Prague. I think he's the Ukrainian under 21 captain. Uh, late on in the first half, Salzburg had the better chance. Had a really good chance, but Schlager um, uh, made made a great save. Second half was more Salzburg. Last could not play their game anymore. Salzburg had have, have, have more chances. However, um, they also could could keep it tight for most of the time. However, it was Salzburg that had quite a few good chances, uh, chance where there were some last ditch efforts or some saves from Schlager. But there was also a pretty good free kick from Schul that with some luck there's someone there on the rebound to convert in the 90th minute. Uh, but then after, after that, there was, uh, it was desperate times. There were uh, two or three really, uh, I don't want to say glorious opportunities, but the ball was in, the box last couldn't clear it, and the ball came back until finally it was settled. It ends in a nil-nil. Again, Salzburg, second uh, game in a row that they did not win at home. And they haven't won now for three games in a row at home. It's kind of a little bit of a, a rough patch for Sal Salzburg there. Uh, reasons given are that many players already are kind of heading out over the whatever. In any case, it makes the league very, very, very exciting. And if I usually am a little bit done on the Viennese Derby um, for the same system reason. It, it, it's a it's an over um, promoted game within Austria, but it, these are the two most story teams in Austria. And this time that game, I actually watched uh, almost the entire second half fully delivered. The first half was just crazy because the first two goals more or less went against the run of play. Uh, Austria Vienna having really good chance, uh, chance but the first chance, Burgstahl of scores. Then Rapid is better in the game for the next 50 minutes, but right in that phase, Gruber gets an equalizer and then Tabakovic a little bit later turns the game on its head. 2-1 for Austria Vienna, who had just won the uh, pre previous start or uh, just for the international break. However, Kerschbaum can find an equalizer for Rapid in a very wild up and down uh, no tactics whatsoever. Uh, game, great at and atmosphere. It had everything. It got even better in the second half, not in terms of goals scored, but Casius gets sent off with a red card in the 47th. But interestingly enough, uh, it actually destroyed at first the game, but it was then Rapid who was actually a little bit better in the game and even created a few chances. Uh, and Austria Vienna were just uh, looking for some counter attacks. Uh, completely lost control, I don't want to say completely, but lost kind of control of, of the game until a ball from Fitz finds Tabakovic, who with a turn gets past two Rapid defenders. Then suddenly it's a two and one because of a missed tackle. He does not play it over. He runs by by himself and converts in the, in the 78th. And it's 3-2 Austria Vienna. Then right off the kickoff, there was a penalty alarm, but uh, like in the first half for Austria, Austria Vienna, this, this time it is seen that the foul was on uh, outside of the um, uh, box. So in both cases, no penal penalty. But uh, just a couple of minutes later, same same position, Marco Grugel gets a free kick and puts it in to internet. Brilliant free kick, and it's 3-3. The derby 
Toll Lilith up and then also Tabakovic who scored two. He got also a red card. So uh, with a second yellow um, because, you know, first elbow, uh, elbow in the box and then uh, he kind of, I mean, yeah, the rapid defender was a little bit low, but he put his foot high, hit the head. Second year yellow card, he sent, sent off. It was a wild, wild game. But if you wanna have a good promotional vi vi video for the Austrian League, that one really delivered on all fronts. I just hope that after the game, uh, the spectators, there was no trouble because the last time I read some really ugly things that happened, hope this was not this time. And so with that, here are the standings. Up top, two points between Salzburg and Sturm Graz, which is the only thing. Everything else kind of remained the same because there were two draws in, in there, but Sturm could move closer. So we have now two points between them, six between Sturm Graz and Lask, which means uh, champ Champions League for, uh, qualification for Lask will not happen. However, they keep also the distance to Rapid Vienna, uh, which I think is also important. On the bottom, as I said, Hartburg Alta Ried. Uh, now um, playing against uh, relegation with Reed being, um, I don't want to say decisive, but they have the steepest hill to climb. And for 7th and 8th uh, spot, which will mean a Europa League playoff spot, or conf Conference League playoff, uh, playoff to get into the Europa Conference League playoff, so a playoff of, 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 of playoff. Uh, it's between Austria, uh, Lustena, Tirol and Wolfsberg. Uh, we see also in the expected standing at Austria Lust and Tirol at the moment are the other teams that should get in there and that on, on top of the standings as they are now are probably also the final standings there. Um, we have an interesting next round. We have another relegation uh, battle between Altach and Ried. Uh, must win for both of them. And then in the championship round, we have Aust Austria Vienna against Klangfurt, fifth against sixth. We have Lask against Rapid Vienna, third against fourth. And we have Sturm Graz against Salzburg, two against one. We will be at the last game. So um, that we don't like to play against Rapid Vienna. Uh, they have always given us trouble. But if you can get a win there, you have basically third place sewn up uh, already, which would be a great thing to have. Going over to Germany, the weekend started with a bang. Schalke 5-2 over Hertha Berlin. Uh, the first two goals scoring or uh, kind of already in the first 15 minutes. Uh, Jovetic pulls from back before left, but again, right after Terode makes it 3-1, saddling the game. Um, great free kick for Bülter. Makes it then 4 1 and 7 and after the game kind of fell a little bit asleep. Uh, and then two, 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 two goals late on. Uh, make it a 5 2 score then. A uh, huge win for Schalke. A terrible loss for Hertha, who uh, sacked their coach. And now Paul Dada is taking over, over, over again. I just fear it's too. Too late for Hertha, to, to, to be honest. I think Hertha have been teetering on the brink. Um, of disaster and might as well go down. However, the uh, talking point number one in Germany was definitely the one-one between Bayern and Hoffenheim. Pavard gave Bayern an early lead, Bayern controlling the game, maybe not creating as many chances as, as you would expect, but there was nothing to suggest that Hoffenheim can come back into the game that, that much control Bayern had. Second half, completely different. Suddenly, uh, Hoffenheim have more of the game, creating chances. Bayern not looking safe, not uh, doing things the way they should be done. Kind of a little bit lax. And then Kramaric in the 71st gets an equalizer. At that point, uh, Dortmund had still a lead in Stuttgart. And when this was heard in Stuttgart, you could see everyone celebrating. Just two minutes later, Pavard thought he had given Bayern the lead again. However, it was called off for offside. Bayern were pressing but could not find the win. Um, huge trouble at Bayern at, at the moment. Coach Tuchel no, no, not happy because uh, he says that whatever his team should be doing, they're not doing it right. Uh, a lot of unrest around. Everyone questioning now the leadership around Khan and Salih Hamicic. Uh, that they just cannot get it right. They are not Hönes and Rummenigge any, 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 anymore. And that's a big, 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 big deal uh, in uh, Bavaria. Because they are looking at a season where they might not win any title. And for Bayern, that is a completely lost season. If you win the championship, it is just you have done what you needed to do. 
anything plus is good but if you don't win any, any, anything you're going down and i think sacking julian nagelsmann might have been although they tried to justify it might it might have been the worst thing that they could, could have done because it put even more unrest in there Mainz had a lead, a lead through Ajok, who is becoming a Bundesliga star, a tall French dude. However, Ljubicic uh, gets an uh, equalizer. Köln were pressing for, for the win, but couldn't find it. Leipzig, 1-0 down in the fifth minute through Meyer at Augsburg. However, Kampel and then twice Timo Werner uh, turned the game around. The second uh, one of the Werner goals was actually a really nice one. Vargas only late pulls one back. So Leipzig, after a kind of... A rough patch at a, at, a, at, a, at a point, also slowly getting back into it. I already said about Stuttgart against Dortmund. This was the WTF game of the weekend. Sebastian Alea and Daniel Marlen, 26 and 33rd, a 2 0 lead for Dortmund. It looked safe. Then Mavropanos gets two yellow cards within four minutes. So they're even a man up. And all you need to do is, is not give them any hope. They even got a little bit lucky that a Girasi goal was then not given for offside in the 52nd. But it seems like they can see it out, although Stuttgart really huge credit to, 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 to Stuttgart. This is a team that while not getting the, the results, they're actually playing quite nicely. And I still have hope that Stuttgart will make it out of this league without having to go through the playoffs. Then Koulibaly in the 78th, pulls, pulls one back in the 84th. Wagnermann equalizes. Everything goes crazy. Dortmund, however, pick themselves up, uh, try to find the winner, and they get the go-ahead goal through Giovanni Reina in the 92nd minute. And at that point, you need to see it out. Stuttgart just cannot... I mean... I saw this last few, 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 few bits. It was really uh, Stuttgart tried to get something that they didn't. And then, if you have the chance, watch that goal. That 3-3 three, three equalizer 9 9 9 9 7 Stuttgart is playing it around on the back. They make one pass forward. They just get over, then try to cross it over. It all seems like last gasp, last gasp. The only pr uh, problem is that Wagnermann plays it across and then... Um, uh, what what is what what is his name? Uh, a young um, Dortmund fan. I think it was now it was not not cool. Young Dortmund defender wants to clear it. He miss hits it. The ball comes to Silas, who calmly puts puts in the net. It was actually a really nice attack starting from the left, going to the right, or whatever. But it's all a last gap. It was not. Uh, it was nicely played, but it all seemed like every touch was a little bit luck, and all the luck fell Stuttgart's way in this case. And it's 3-3, but they deserved it for their fighting spirit. And Dortmund really, uh, it's disastrous for them. Disastrous is also in a way what Frankfurt is doing. They had no business losing to uh, Gladbach, uh, uh, losing points to Gladbach. Gladbach took, 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 took an early lead. But what Frankfurt created in the second half should have been way more than the equalizer uh, that they got through Kolomirny. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a rotten season for Frankfurt. Again. Uh, they are doing well in cup competitions, but in the league, they just cannot get a string of results uh, together. And if you look at, at the squad, you would say they are easily among the top four teams in the Bundesliga. Uh, the early game on Sunday. So also a little bit of a lucky win for Freiburg. Um, not much happening in the first half with Bremen, maybe a little bit better, even creating some chances than the goal. Uh, came right after the half in the first, first, first minute. Grifo had a shot where he was then complaining, ah, there should have been a hands penalty. It was not because the hand was so close to, to, to the body. And just in these complaints, Werder uh, launched an attack and Bittenkopf plays it over to Philipp and it's 1-0 Werder Bremen. Werder Bremen could have doubled that lead. However, out of nowhere, Höhler plays it to Solai who gets an equalizer and then four minutes later, the two turned around, a brilliant header by Höhler turns it, it, it around there was only uh, a one or uh, you know some half chances however the xg in that spoke volumes because i think it was a uh, 1.5 to uh, 0.6 uh, something like that in favor of werder bremen union berlin get a only a 1-1 one, one against bochum this is a vital point for bochum as we will see and was against Leber, the Leverkusen was a really dull game that laid on Leverkusen were, were pressing, but I think their minds were already in Brussels for the Europa League. So, 
we have now Bayern Munich two points still ahead of uh, Dortmund and I have to say if this would have been level uh, I would feel more comfortable saying it's a title race this was a big blow for Dortmund this was a really 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 big blow for Dortmund Leipzig are back into it uh, just getting within a point of Union Berlin but also Freiburg stay in there so it's between those three I think for the last spot although Leverkusen have been in gold form but a little bit now you know a draw but they had a few win wins in a row I think Le Leverkusen could, could do something uh, Frankfurt and Mainz you know it also depends who wins the German Cup and so on Frankfurt is still in it. Frank Frankfurt from Mainz, Sevs is a 7 8. One of those will make it into Europe, most likely. On the bottom, I think Hoffenheim is safe. I still think Werder is safe. I think Köln is safe now. Augsburg, not quite, although they usually have the resiliency. But Augsburg had have a rotten run of form with only two points out of the last five games. Whereas, and Bochum almost similarly. Uh, Stuttgart play quite well, Schalke could, so it is tight. However, when I, when I look at it overall, I think the last three potentially will be the last, last three. As I said, if Augsburg and Bochum lose points, but it's still, uh, they have a three-point cushion and a five-point cushion respectively, which can be done in no time, but I think it will be a steep, steep climb, and I fear that Hertha is, the, is a team that is totally trending in the wrong direction however you know we've seen bigger miracles happening um expect standings is more or less what we see on the bottom stuttgart schalke hertha on the bottom on top leipzig should pick up the third spot and then union berlin just ahead of freiburg uh leverkusen in sixth frankfurt would finish seventh uh i give you the next two rounds uh we have title race bayern at mainz and dortmund uh frankfurt both could be shaky. We have a big one in the relegation. Augsburg against Stuttgart. Augsburg, a win here would settle Augsburg. Uh, Bochum uh, could pick up some points at home to Wolfsburg, a team that is kind of in the middle. Hertha Bremen is also uh, one that one has to watch if you're in the relegation threatened teams. And maybe Freiburg and Union Berlin uh, for this Champions League spot. Uh, Lever Leverkusen live. Le Leipzig is probably the more key fixture there. And then the week after, again, it is the championship teams against the relegation threat teams, Bochum and Hertha this time around. Um, Stuttgart play at home to Gladbach. Um, and then again, Champions League battle, Union Berlin against Leverkusen. So a very, very interesting, very tough weeks ahead for Leverkusen as well. So that's it from me. Uh, please let, let, let me know if you want to know anything or if you want to add anything in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.